what's up guys it's tracking in a world where every opportunity hasbro has to disappoint me they have set a new bar for just cheaping out uh there's one guy in the 3d printing space that has none of that and it's pretty awesome so this is a package from the guy whose surname is so appropriate it's like he's got tiger blood this is a package from timmy Wynn. Mall Ninja skills aside, this is a pretty cool parcel. So we've got some bonus material over here. We've got a package itself and lots of uh, technical specifications for the Kestrel, uh, his latest micro pistol with a lot of information. I'll just go ahead and throw those up over here while I read our user guide. The Kestrel is a software-controlled, fully automatic flywheel blaster. Access the battery compartment by removing the thumb screw on the bottom of the grip. The blaster will detect whether it has a 2S or a 3S battery and adjust its operation accordingly. Upon detecting the battery's unloaded voltage failing below the low voltage cutoff, the blaster will stop operating to prevent over-discharge. All that goes to say, this little bubble wrap beauty is smart. It's smart and very handsome. So coming at us in all filamentum, um, this is their purple red, which I really, really like for that deep red vibrant color, and their vertigo gray, along with a little bit of a highlight orange. This is the Kestrel. The Kestrel is a micro pistol. Hopefully you guys can see how exceptionally small it is. If you need a size comparison, it's only a wee bit longer than a Jupiter and a wee bit shorter than the Strife. And well, I mean, no disrespect to Luke whatsoever, it does a whole heck of a lot more than either of those blasters put together. This is a solenoid powered, <laughs> computer controlled, fully automatic, talon slinging, nano wheel geometry pistol with incredible ergonomics. This pistol grip is chunky enough that it can hold batteries and comfortable enough for adult sized hands. There's plenty of room for me and then some to spare, uh, as well as a very comfortable trigger pull and response because again, it's all electronically controlled uh, and uh, what appears to be a nicely contoured, very handsomely beveled uh, flared magwell underneath and just a weedy bitty bitty picatinny up top. Now, I've been told that this is using a flywheel world solenoid driver, a custom bit of code and programming, and I think a Narf Duino microcontroller, which is essentially a micro Arduino uh, with specifics for this hobby, as well as uh, the Flywheel the World Nano uh, wheels up top. Overall, a very handsome package with an aesthetic that is undeniably Timmy. This is the same guy who developed the saber that you guys admire on my wall over here, as well as the hummingbird, which I am such a huge fan of. I had to license it for nextlevelnerf.com. This is a handsome, handsome blaster. Now, uh, that said, all we got to do is uh, whip out a battery and plug it in, take it downstairs and put it through its paces. All right guys, so we had to bring the Kestrel out here and I can just tell you that the form factor is really, really nice. I even want to applaud Timmy. I think that his print quality has gotten much better. I can only find one flaw in this blaster and that's just that in an attempt to make this grip as comfy and as thin as possible, it seems like we're missing maybe one perimeter there and there are a couple of gaps down in the, the knurling in there. It's not knurling, I forget what it's called, but uh, the, the grippy pattern, I suppose. And then we'll throw this in. On 2S, there seems to be a slight delay in your first shot and you can see that here. Given that the FPS constraints of the Flywheel the World system are such that it's never really gonna be tearing up your competitive games, I don't mind that delay so much. I don't think that that's a, a huge issue. This is a very fun, very compact, very sidearmy sort of build. Let's go ahead and throw a couple over the chronograph on 2S. 102, 106, 105, and then of course, like 2S on full auto. Pretty consistently 109. And then a slightly lower reading. Let's do a quick burst fire, just uh, down range, see kind of how that feels on 2S. But overall, like between the very snappy mag release and the, uh, the very compact, very flush profile, as well as the options, I don't think I'm ever gonna do anything but these fiber optics. I think that they're very brilliant. Uh, however, the ability to add pick tinny up top, put any optics on it you want, change to a level release, if you're a madman, this is actually a pretty good uh, release style, at least for me it is. But uh, the overall size profile of this is what makes it so, so much fun. So let's uh, just send a few down range. This would be a great, 
end war primary <laughs> actually at these fps's uh with that rate of fire i think that this would be a lot a lot of fun it would be the perfect companion uh for a scabbard rig on one hip so you guys can see here, this is as simple as pulling the space plate off and one thumb screw, and then you do have a lot, a lot of space down in here. I was using a Graphene 950 for my 2S. Uh, that's, of course, the custom one for my buddy Luke over at Out of Darts, who coincidentally also has a pretty mean video on the, uh, the Kestrel system. So definitely worth checking that out. I'll throw a link in the description box below if you'd like a second opinion. Unfortunately, my Turnigy uh, 1300 will fit Oh wow, will it all fit? No, it's so close. It's so close. This guy, again, Timmy did the best he could to make as much battery space here in the compartment as possible. So here's just a quick 3S demo. Uh, we've got it in there. I mean, it's gonna fall out eventually, but we'll see. We got a tilt to avoid J. J, J. Come here, J. Touch. Come here. Oh, hey, I need you to go over there so you don't get spooked. And on 3S, that delay is much less. Getting FPS is a little bit higher. Um, Jinx, what's your... I can't, it'll, it'll delay the... <laughs> So there we go, 120, 120. Probably as we build up a little bit of foam on the uh, the flywheels, we'll get better there, but uh... 125, this is a great end war blaster on either FPS, truthfully. Um, the rate of fire obviously goes up. We'll do one more burst fire down range, just showing you the 3S capability. And a couple of those kind of flopped around. In a, in a funky sort of way. I do just want to point out with a very loose grip on here, like this, the, uh, the feedback from the solenoid, the noid reciprocation is really, uh, I don't know, some people have told me with a magazine in this looks kind of like a Tech 9, I can sort of see that, although realistically what it looks like is uh, Timmy DNA in a very compact package. I like his design language, it's elegant in its simplicity, the functionality of it is good, and this filamentum color profile on here is just whew, very, very sharp, very clean, very cool. Uh, huge thank you to Timmy. I think that this is one of the first ones to leave his workshop, and the price is right. At $300, I think that this is very fairly specced uh, and fairly priced. Given that it's got a computer inside of it, given that it's got a Noid driving it, like a lot of uh, prototypey things going on in here apparently as well. I've been told that the motors are something special coming out of Flywheel the World's Workshop and uh, I would love to put them toe to toe against a bunch of our hobby's current offerings. But given just how weird and uh, kind of, I mean quite literally uh, constrained the, uh, the FTW um, flywheels are, I think it makes sense that there's now a proprietary motor to avoid some of the burnout issues that have happened in the past. All in all, I've run the, a few magazines through this thing and I'm not detecting any sort of issues <laughs> running it hot uh, for quite a while. I don't know if you'd ever wanna like mag dump, mag dump, and it definitely gets warm up in this area just using it outside for this review so far, but uh, a very, very handsome blaster in a very, very compact package. I mean, that is tough to beat. So that is the Kestrel. I'll link down in the description box below where you can find it, uh, as well as to that other opinion. And uh, who knows? Maybe once these parts become more widely available, we'll uh, start stitching together some arcane versions, see if we can't solve some of those, uh, those printing struggles. Uh, but overall, just a real... <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen, I knew it was gonna happen. Anyway, uh, big fan of Timmy's work, super duper love getting to pilot one of the early versions of this. I think that it's tremendous, a very, very cool sidearm or primary for HVZ or uh, some of your, your lower FPS engagements or wars, as well as just, and I know that Luke is gonna run this on the, uh, the magnet thing. It weighs so little that on the magnet holster, I think that this would be a great, great option. So that's the Kestrel, I'm Drac. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and bell me so that you stay plugged into all of the latest and greatest Nerf news, accessories, and to-dos. Uh, much love, Nerf on Drag out.